Hello and welcome back to coverage of the PDGA Euro Tour stop number one, the Pro Forester Tournament here in Lagoda Disc Golf Course, Varaždin, Croatia. We are excited to bring you this hot coverage here. This is Round 2 Front 9 MPO lead card coverage brought to you by MDG Media. I'm Connor Wood and once again with me, Elias Lukkonen. Hello guys, excited to be here, looking forward if these players can shoot the hot rounds that they did in the first round. So we got Paul Macbeth, obviously six-time world champion, um, going into the event as the, as the crowd favorite. Joining him will be Luke Bain, currently sitting at a 1002 rating from Baringa, Australia. He has been putting on a great performance throughout the tournament and I think he'll continue it here. Let's hope so. Also from Estonia, Geiro Jogisalo, very solid player, um, definitely playing way above his rating and looking forward to continue doing that throughout the second round. Rounding out our lead card here, your previous year's champion, Jakub Semerad, 1016 rated, fresh off the flight from the United States. He's had a strong start to the season, well-rounded game, has shown that he has all the tools to win this tournament, and I'm glad he'll be joining us here today as well. As we take a look at the top 10 standings currently, you see Paul sitting in solo first at 10 under par, Cato and Luke tied at 8 under par, and Jakub in fourth at 6 under. Obviously, we still have 36 holes of golf to play. The battle continues, and we get started here on hole one. Par four, 190 meters. Players will have this initial hyzer shot for the right-handed backhand that you want to push this tree line on the right as far as possible while swinging it left, opening up your entrance to the second tunnel towards the green. A really good shot will push both the distance and leftwards as it opens up your entrance. You have then a tightly wooded tunnel shot into a well-guarded green, an attackable birdie but by no means easy. Yeah, this is certainly one of the more stressful, actually stress-free holes on the course since the drive is pretty easy. You want about 120 to 130 meters of hyzer and from there you only have about 60 meters left of the basket. So ideally, I'm expecting all of these players to grab a stable uh, stable and glidey distance driver. Looks like Paul is doing that. See here, Paul getting us started in round two. This one is a little bit lower than I think he might like to get maximum glide, but he'll still be well positioned to shape likely an Anheuser backhand into the tunnel. May not have hit that sweet spot though. Yeah, on this hole, really anything out in the open field with decent distance is a chance for the birdie. Gero going with a slightly more inside flatter line. He gets a lot of distance and the fade puts him into a really good position. That's just perfect. The further you can be left up the fairway, if you're that far, it's always better for the angle. You see Luke now on the tee. Team Innova player. And he gets his drive out there, really pushing the width of the fairway, but trusting the over stability to bring it back. Gets nice enough left and enough distance to still be giving him a look as well, although maybe slightly pinched. Jakub now. Jakub going with a more lower penetrating shot, possibly trying to push it more forward, but ends up on the left side of the fairway, which is just ideal for the second shot. And on the second shot, it is really a player's choice. Look here, going with a slight oh, Anheuser. God. Unfortunately, pulling it to the right. Paul is just in the perfect spot. He can just throw a straight shot from here. But also pulling it slightly right, but getting through all the trees. That's a good break for the six-time world champion. Yeah, very rare you break through this tunnel all the way to the green if you don't hit it purely. Jakob also in a fantastic spot. Slightly longer, but with a straight look to the basket and a straight shot to the basket. Slides that one up beautifully just outside bullseye. Fantastic shot. That was a great shot. And as is very common for this course, the green is very slow. There is some 
uh, lush grass behind the basket and some uh, some bushes that will stop the disc even if it's coming pretty fast. As you can see, Keiro going slightly long of the basket, but no skip and stays inside the circle. Luke now looking to manufacture some scramble to make his way to the green. No birdie look from inside this rough, but he puts himself just within the circle to save par. Solid result, and you see him up now to get us started on the green. Luke Bain for his four. Great putt. That's a really good putt to start the round, especially for Luke. I'm sure this is one of the first times he's on the lead card, and great to get those nerves calmed down on the first hole. Keiro with a similar distance look, having to straddle out for the tree on the right. Gets it in the middle. He's a very solid putter, has a good stroke and a nice release. Great birdie to start off the round. It's, as we said, it's not a very, it's not a very easy hole to bogey, but the birdie definitely takes two good shots. Quite some finesse on the second one to hit the tunnel purely. Very rare you have the identical landing spot off the tee. As we see, Jakob and Paul also take their birdies. That's three out of four. A hot start for this lead card. Yeah, that was really well done. We move on to hole two. A 125 meter par three through this initial gap between the trees about four meters wide. You want to pierce a flip up hyzer or soft anhyzer flex into this open field where you then once again have a late gap and slightly descending green to try and penetrate through and find your birdie. Personally, I think the flex shapes the, makes the fairway the biggest and shapes it most naturally. But you can definitely rely on the hyzer flip up as well. We'll see what these players choose to shoot. Yeah, very true. And if you're going for the flex shot, there is actually a possibility of going through the last bush. You don't have to hit the last gap perfectly. Unfortunately, Paul pull, pulls it to the right. But pulling it to the right just slightly is okay because you can miss the last gap to the right and still go through to the basket. This hole is plays as the fifth mo most difficult hole on the course, averaging almost half a stroke over par. Not for these players though, as Gero puts a great shot, but just turns over slightly more. But I think he's gonna have an easy time going to the basket from there and maybe even have a look for the birdie. I think there's definitely a chance. Jakob now liking that lower straight flex. He's trusting the stability of this as it begins to fade out just towards the final gap less than a meter away from making it all the way he'll be left with a circle to look for his birdie a very common landing zone is that last gap is tight and far away yeah that was a very good shot from Jakub and the good thing was that he kept it low which is really important for keeping the disc flying straight for all that distance Luke unfortunately slipping it to the left and looks like he kicked quite far left from that initial tree we'll see where he ended up Paul in a tough spot looking to shape an Anheuser forehand now off an initial tree kick. As he gets that on a hard angle, cuts it back to flat. He is not yet on the green, will be heavily obstructed to the basket. Yeah, that's. I don't see how he makes it from there. It's uh, 30 meters and he has to throw it on a steep hyzer angle from there. Luke pitching out from the bushes. He had... He had a taste of uh, some of the bad rough this course has to offer, especially in the woods. But a good approach from there. Get it under the basket. And hopefully just a taste and not a three-course menu. <laughs> hopefully. And Keiro being able to give it a run from there. I guess he went slightly through the right side bushes. Paul actually has a putt from here. Straddling the hyzer just off the cage right side. You see the frustration there. Very difficult putt though. High expectations on himself. Yeah, that's not, that's not on the putt. That's definitely on the drive. And Jakub being able to run it as well, but misses just to the right and stays close. Keiro making sure to put in his par. Solid scramble there from that right side. No worries for him. Jakob likely doing the same. Yeah, it's it's certainly quite rarely birdied hole because you have to hit the shot almost perfectly in order to get to the green. As we saw a couple of shots from Keiro and Jakob 
being almost really good, but just missing that final touch to get into the circle. They move on to hole three. Now playing by the Drava River, things open up a little bit for the next few holes. This par four sits at 252 meters. You have a wide open fairway to push your drive into. At 162 meters up, you have a hazard river dividing the fairway and then a teardrop green that you need to hit to remain safe from that hazard. You'll see a lot of players push their drive as far as they can wanting to settle at about 150 if you have the distance. You are then left with about a 100 meter big hyzer into the green to try and sit it down. You have very thick grass, so it's rare you get many skips or ground play here. Yeah, for these players, this hole plays quite simple. You just have to throw a basic shot off the tee and then a basic hyzer approach after the drive. If nothing goes wrong, it's obviously um, possible to find the left side OB, which Keiro just stays right off. That's a, that's a good position there, only about 115 to 120 to the basket left. Jakub with a very similar shot. And actually, one thing to note on this hole today, as he just seems to stay in bounds. There was, um, there was a slight tailwind on the hole, so off the drive, these players are looking to get some decent distance with a slightly more understable disc than normally. And uh, the chance of flipping it over or fading to the left is lower than normal because um, in a tailwind it's easier to keep the, keep the disc going straight. Luke utilizing a little bit more height than the others doesn't get the complete distance but he still I'm sure will be attacking the island here on his second. Luke pushing the high and wide hyzer had a good snap on it as that crashes into the green he'll need this to stick. And it does a fantastic shot positioning himself about six meters out for his birdie. That's a great shot. And as we saw again, not much skip on the screen. The grass is again very thick. And that's another reason why the hyzer plays so good. It doesn't really skip that much. Keiro with a decent shot inside the island. But uh, still weighs out for the birdie. Jakob looks to be a little bit early on this. I'm a little bit worried for him finding the hazard. He'll be just on the edge there. We'll see where his lie is left. You see Paul now once again swinging the wide hyzer. He parked it in round one and he's parked it in round two. Yeah, that really looked easy for him and I'm sure it was also, it felt easy for him. Yep. Kato with a good stroke, but unfortunately just high. Jakob now. Yep. Oh, looking like he's inside the island. I believe I saw a flag by his right foot that he was in front of, suggesting that that will still be a par putt for him. Luke off the right side chains. A little bit of struggles early on for him. We'll see if he can tighten up. That's unfortunate, especially since these first four holes, as Paul taps in the great birdie, especially since these first four holes are certainly some of the holes you want to score on. After hole four, the course gets significantly more difficult. So after these first four holes, you would really like to be at least under par, one or two or even three strokes. Jakob, with that putt, takes the bogey, did not stick the island. Taking that hazard penalty stroke, he played it where it lied. In four throws, he takes a five. Yeah, that's an unfortunate bogey, but it happens really quick on this hole. Luke just tapping in for the par there. And Kato will do the same. So even though it's a long hole, for these advanced players it's uh, quite simple. And you saw for that top tier power that Paul has, Heiser Heiser. So really a little bit of a distance check on hole three, some touch check if you don't have that full distance on one angle. And we move on to hole four. A 114 meter par three. This hole offers two lines as the drone flies straight between these two large guardian trees battling these last ones left of the green or the wide swinging hyzer out on the open over the OB to the right. If you can trust a disc with some solid stability and you have the distance, I think definitely the preferred play as you do not need to shape through the tiny gap in the middle. 
Yeah, I would expect all of these players to go for the Heiser. Paul, after last round, hitting the basket for the ace and just barely bouncing out. And that's another great shot from him just outside the bullseye. This is actually the easiest hole on the entire course. So all of these players are certainly looking forward to getting inside the circle and hopefully getting their birdie. Definitely one of the holes where bogey is really infrequently coming into play on this course. Perhaps the only one where the bogey potential is low here at Lagoda Disc Golf Park. Yeah, it's certainly much less stressful than a lot of the course. Keiro there with a decent shot. He's only about 7 to 8 meters away. Also on this hole there was a slight tailwind during the day. So the hyzer gets the basket even easier than normal and Luke also with just the regular hyzer and places it inside the circle that's well done Jakob now with a similar height and width has all the pace to push up there skips just outside bullseye we are having four circle one looks here that's no surprise from this car they all have enough distance to make the hyzer look easy and that's exactly what they did Keiro straddling underneath this branch. Has a confident putt, tons of spin in the heart. Very good stroke there, showing off the different styles of putt he can do. Paul with just a formality from four and a half meters. And a really diverse uh, lead card we have here. Four countries represented, three continents. Exciting stuff and a great time to be a part of European disc golf. Yeah, for sure. And it's great to see these players, you know, getting on the lead card. They actually shot, all of them shot very hot rounds compared to the rest of the field. As we saw in the beginning, the edge of the top 10 was at two under. So the six under that Jakub shot as the worst round of this lead card is really great. As they do the European tradition, the middle European tradition of uh, shaking the ch shaking the chains after a star frame. That's great to see some good Welcome camaraderie player. of the card. Commencing disc selection. Choose your driver. The Kotari. Choose your approach. The Kia. Choose your putter. The Tui. Selection complete. And now we enter the woods. Hole 5 is a 203 meter par 4 with a tunnel shot off the tee and a series of gaps that are very important to hit if you want birdie to still be in play. A good shot will land right here before this little dugout trench. As you then cross over into the second leg of the fairway, you do have OB to the bushes on the right. That is the fairway of 6, as well as some very thick rough on the left. You want to crash into this guarded green. A lot of players will opt to be 5 to 10 short rather than 5 long as left, right and long of the basket is some thick woods. I would be expecting all of these players to go with a relatively low shot um, through the gap. Paul going a little bit higher but with a slow disc so he doesn't get uh, fade out. That looks to be a good position. He's gonna have a hyzer look towards the basket from there. Being more left of this drive means having more of a hyzer look and being more right means that you have a more of a straight tunnel shot to the basket. There's also a good opportunity to go over the trees. Keiro with a good shot as well there, right in the middle slash left side of the fairway. Luke now shaping a soft flex and actually fighting through the right side of the second gap, kicks back into the fairway. He's well positioned now. Fortunate break for him. Jakub going with a slow disc as well. Just hitting the right side of the gap, but bounces through, and he also has uh, some sort of a chance to get to the basket. On this hole, as on many holes on this course in the woods, being on the fairway is the most important thing. You can see Luke, even from the middle of the fairway, going over the trees, because 
well, there's no trees in the sky, obviously. And just the perfect shot landing inside the bullseye from 120 to 130 meters away. That's a great shot. Incredible use of the height and power flex over the top. Jakob now going to be shaping, I think, a more pure hyzer angle. As he hangs it high and wide, this is going to swing back in, try to crash through or just before these final plants. He'll be left just outside the circle for his birdie putt. A very common landing zone on the second. Yeah, and as you can see, all of these players have the power to go over the trees on the second shot. So just taking all the risk out of play. Unfortunately, Paul finds the, finds the only risk on the green, which is those bushes on the left and right. He's going to be maybe just inside the circle or on the edge of the circle, but possibly with no look to the basket since the bushes are so thick. And Keiro also opting for the hyzer a little bit inside, but still just beating that last corner. He'll have another straddle putt to try and secure his birdie. Paul from that left side going with really the only play to shape that. Even the Anheuser forehand doesn't play due to those outreaching branches a little bit higher. Gives the forehand roller. And Jakob, the birdie bid just a touch low, still securing his par. And still, this whole play is pretty tough. Par is by no means a bad score. Yeah, it is the third most difficult hole on the course, averaging over a half stroke over par. Kato, unfortunately, unable to get that great birdie on this hole, but let's see if he can clean up the par. He's had some putting, um, confident putting strokes so far. Just barely squeaks it in. Able to clean that one, one um, missed putt there. Hopefully it doesn't doesn't affect his confidence too much and it is a really useful skill to have here on this course those awkward stance putts you very rarely find yourself with an open straight look to the basket very common it's obstructed and very common that the footing is a little bit touchy as you see paul there drop in his par now luke still waiting to tap in his birdie after that incredible second shot yeah that's that's a great birdie to get your really gaining strokes on the field with that one You see here hole 6, par 3, 102 meters. You have an immediate high floor archway to try and penetrate through. Once you do, you have some flight space into this wide open field where you want to crest away from the rough on the right, over this fallen tree, and tucked behind on the left you find the basket. This one is a really tricky distance considering you need to throw a nose up. I think for many players right between the mid range and fairway, you need a great degree of control over your hyzer angle and ensure that you push straight the whole way despite throwing nose up. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough hole and the gap at the end that we see right now over the log is actually quite small and the gap is far away. It's about 85 meters from the tee and it's still only like three meters wide. So this shot that's Paul, that Paul's doing looks pretty nice if it's just long enough and just barely gets around the last bush and he's well inside the circle. That's a great shot. Super solid. He's leaning on his buzzes there on hole six. You see Keiro now shaping another soft hyzer as he beats that last tree. Just barely catching the top actually. Will be left with a circle to obstructed look. Really common landing zone again. That's where the majority of throws do end up if they're not just perfect on the height. Jakub going with the lowest possible shot still over the hillside and squeaks through the left side bushes. That's actually a great result. He's just on the edge of the circle there and we'll have a chance to maybe finally make a circle two putt, putt since he's had many of those. Gato with the running the basket and really good run. Really good confident spinny run from there. Luke just behind the tree gives it a soft stepper a bit on the right side. We'll see Jakob now from his putt under the trees, known to have a strong stepper. Goes for the standstill though and finds it cleanly. That is a fantastic birdie to get him going here on hole six. His third birdie already through six holes. That was perfect. He's got that really stabby low spin putt with a bit of a nose up delivery. Paul with just a, just a formality from four meters. That's great. Great couple of birdies for the card there. 
It's surprisingly, um, it's surprisingly rarely birdied hole, since again on this hole you have to throw pretty much the perfect shot to be inside the circle. As we see Luke and Cato taking their pars, another great overall score for our lead card, playing the hole two under, no trouble found there on hole six. Here we are at hole seven, a 137 meter par three that is ever so slightly downhill. You have a very forgiving but rough fairway with trouble to the left and the right. You'll want to push your drive up to flat, glide through the fairway, get as much distance as possible and try to sit it down. I think good control of the height and turn required in order to have a birdie putt. On this hole, it's quite common to see players turning their drive over to the right since the left side bushes seem a little bit more taunting of the tee shot. Although Paul is going just looking for the perfect shot, keeps the height nice and level and the perfect small turn and just parks the hole. That's an incredible shot. Let's take another look at it. The beautiful form. Very smooth form, one of the smoothest in the world, I think. And just effortless 135, gets it up to flat, fades just at the right time, extra ground play to put himself at bullseye's edge. Incredible display of control over his disc. Yeah, that was very impressive. This is a very rarely bullseye hole. Let's see what Jakob can do. Trying to keep it low as well with the more of a turnover shot compared to Paul's Heiser flip to flat. This looks just perfect as well. He's also on the edge of the bullseye on the other side. That was very good angle control from Jakub. Able to land it almost flat on the right side. And I believe his tour series Ballista Pro. Jakub having that disc coming out this season. We see, I believe, Luke using a little bit too much height for the amount of turn it had. Fades out left into the rough. I think just on the edge of the trees, probably still an open look, although tricky stance. Kato now approaching his drive off the tee. The common right side mistake, unfortunately, coming into play for him as he throws it towards the right side with a little bit of turn. On this hole, you're trying to go with slightly understable disc to get the distance straight. But uh, as we saw, if you miss the line, it's easily on the right side. But that's a good good approach from the bushes and a good break for him to even have an approach from there. Because many times if you go into the right side bushes, you might not even have a look. Luke with a decent bid with the almost blind forehand Anheuser. Keiro securing his par off the scramble. Luke will likely be doing the same, leaving himself so close. We see Jakob and Paul for their birdie putts. It's rare to see people this close for the birdie on this hole, but that's a great one for Jakub. Getting two in a row in this fairly difficult stretch on the course. Paul with the same. He's playing very clean after the single bogey on hole two. And really manufacturing a ton of birdies on difficult holes goes to show his skill and experience. As we see here, hole eight, a 162 meter par four with a very specific shape. You have an incredibly tight tunneled archway that you need to break out of hopefully on your first shot as you open up into this small field. You then have this bridge between the first and second legs of the fairway. A really good shot will even make its way up to past these two trees into the second leg. The fairway then bends softly to the right and then back to the left. As you have a series of large trees and incredibly thick rough to navigate through, you have a tucked away green with a slight drop off behind it. If you come in too hot, you can very quickly go long on the second. It's a very demanding hole that requires a specific shape. Yeah, on the first shot, your main goal is just to hit the gap. It's not that much about getting a lot of distance, although Paul seems to be going... Yeah, Paul is just on the edge of the first landing zone, that's pretty much a perfect shot. He will have something straight with a little bit of finish to the basket from there. Unfortunately, Jakub hitting high in the ceiling on the right side. Again on this hole, very common for this course, the low ceiling. You have to keep your shot low in order to hit the, hit the gap and stay on the fairway. 
And the forehand does play quite friendly off the tee to push straight and then end softly to the right. We saw Luke go a little bit on the inside, catch the tunnel. And Keiro as well. You can see how nose down they need to throw that shot given the ceiling that Jakob found. It's a common result. Very rare, actually, that all four players get through. So we'll see their scrambles now from a tricky lie. This is a good-looking shot from Luke to get lots of distance, progress up the fairway, but he'll fade out into left side rough, pinching off his next approach. Yeah, and you can see the rough on this course is really rough. I would be surprised if Luke has a shot to the basket from there. Jakub, smartly, not going for a lot of distance, but rather pitching up in the middle of the fairway. Keiro going a bit more aggressive towards the right side of the fairway and just barely stays inside the edge of the fairway and that's a great shot. You can see Paul is looking to hit this tunnel with a slight hyzer with a mid-range gliding it on the left side slightly inside. Fortunately, fortunately goes through the left side rough and I assume he's gonna have a little to no look to the basket but at least he's able to get up and down for the par. Fortunate to break out into that small walking path should at least offer him some sort of arm swing or stroke to look for on his next one. We see just crashing the green there, dropping down at about circle's edge. Luke, here's him just pitching out back into the fairway. He's going to be playing a soft hyzer with a low speed disc here. It's a very common thing to see on this hole to people just pitching out sideways to the fairway from the bushes and unfortunately... That's what Luke had to do as well. Kato with a almost throws it in. Great backstop hitting a stump on the on the edge of the bullseye and stays right there. This hole is the second most difficult hole on the course. Playing 0.68 strokes oh. over par as Paul makes it with a huge hyzer putt from 20 meters away. Completely blind. Over the top, around the corner, sends it to the sky and drops it in. What an incredible awareness of where the basket is, his placement, absolute control of his putter. Wow. Jakob with another great putt, putting that in from just within the circle. Great par save and an insane putt from Paul. That looked like more of a... The flight of the disc looked more like a basketball than a disc. <laughs> that Spike Heiser game. Very rare you see the Spike Heiser putt. Very true. And again... The group playing this hole even par, which is not a bad result for the second most difficult hole in the course. There is no doubt, as we once again leave the woods, you see here hole 9. A 125 meter par 3 with the basket perched up on this hillside. You do have danger to the left, anything that crests over the hill will very quickly find OB. A lot of players, if they have the power, will throw a long hyzer and try to crash the hillside. Some players may opt to flip something up to flat to push the extra distance, but really it's about trying to land this one as close as possible to the top of the hill without going over. Yes, and the uh, importance is definitely the last words, not going over. If you go at all over the hillside to the left, you have a very high risk of going OB uh, near the bank. And Paul plays it safe to the hillside. That's a good shot, although he will have a have a daunting putt from there, from just on the edge of the circle. Jakob looks to be going for a similar shot, although fading more aggressively towards the basket. And wow, that was just perfect control. Hitting just on the edge of the bank and skipping on top of the top of the bank. Incredible. It's hard to state how difficult it is to really stick your disc on top. As we see a great example there, Keiro, even catching the early side of the hill, skips over the whole thing. He'll be on the back side, but I believe safe. Luke now swinging a similar hyzer into the green. He also sticks it on top. You can see that there's a small walking track. Some of that grass is very thick and can catch the disc. We see Keiro up first from the other side of the hill. Gives it a bid just over the top. Hard to tell from the camera how much uphill that is. He's had to put the disc at least three meters above. And that's a great putt there from Luke from the edge of the circle, making it in the middle. And he had a pretty good angle to putt at the basket. Even if he had missed that, he most likely would have stayed close. That's not for Paul though, but he's not missing that. Makes it in the middle for a great front nine score of six under. 
Incredible stuff. We'll see Jakob here with the shortest putt of the group for his birdie. Another incredible tee shot as Jakob has now put together a strong front nine as well. Four down. A good pace here set by the lead card through this front nine. And Cairo just wanting to tap it in. He's also played clean with zero bogeys on the scorecard so far. Hopefully not on this hole. He makes the par. And uh, minus two for the front nine. Not very hot, but that's certainly a very decent score. No doubt. As you saw that minus, ten, minus two snuck into the top ten overall for the round. It's a good pace to have halfway through. As we take a look at the standings here through the front nine. Paul leading the pack with a little bit of a cushion now at 16 under par. Jakob Semeret tied with Scott Stokely and Cato at 10 under. Scott putting together a 5 under through the front nine. Luke has fallen to 5th with only 1 under, but looks to be well positioned. His game is really coming together now. That's a lot of scoring separation. We saw inside the top 10 was uh, 15 strokes of difference. So very different scores there. Speaks volumes about the course. We hope you enjoyed this coverage. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe and we will catch you on the back nine.